Good morning, everyone. God bless everybody. Hope uh, your day goes well today. Hey, I just wanted to come on here this morning, and uh, I wish everyone well. And uh, if, if you're religious and you're in church and uh, you love Jesus this morning, I'm happy for you. Uh, I know a lot of my messages may, may strike some of you raw, and that's okay. Uh, I intend for it to. Uh, I want to um, punch you in the gut and make you love Jesus more. I want you to think that uh, religion is bad for you. And if you're, if you're placing your trust in man, uh, in horses and chariots, um, you're, you're in the wrong business. Uh, if you're loving on man and not for the right reason, for their soul's sake, for, to meet Jesus, then you're in it for the wrong business. Uh, and uh, that's exactly what you're in it for is a business, a church business, uh, religion. Religion is, is not uh, what Jesus came to give you. Jesus came to give us life. And uh, if you live by the letter, you're going to die by the letter. The law is death. And that is exactly what Jesus came to reveal to us, that the law of Moses is death. And those that live by the sword will die by the sword. And that law is the sword. Uh, the letter killeth, but the spirit that Jesus came to give us, to bring back to us, is life. And he brought us life for more abundance and uh, to live freely, not bound by the, the rudiments and, the, and the, the, the clinging of man's laws. And uh, Jesus broke us free from laws and those things that uh, would, would cling to us and, and pull us down. And he brought that forth in a magnificent way in Matthew 23. Now, let me tell you right now, that Bible is not everything that God uh, said. Um, there are many twists and turns in that Bible. And many of it will lead you away from Jesus, not to Jesus. Um, and not everything is bad in the Bible. Not everything is good in the Bible. It is to be deciphered by the Holy Ghost, by the Spirit. That's why the Spirit will bring you life. But that letter will bring you death. And many of these passages lead you away from the Bible. That's why there's 35,000 religions, if what some of these claim to be true is true. Um, so anyhow, I come to give you my version. This is my story, and uh, you don't have to believe it. It's up to you. And if what I say holds out to be what God really gave me, and, and you stand before Jesus someday and say, I didn't know, and he says, well, I gave it to this man, and, and you, you didn't believe it, that's up to you. It's between you and God. I have no, I don't, I don't care if you believe what I say or not. I can only give you what I feel God has given me to proclaim. And, and you can believe that man behind the pulpit that you give money to. That's up to you. And if it's working for you, that's fine with me. I'm not here to judge you. But what I feel that the Lord has put on my heart, just like anyone else, uh, you, can, you can block me on the Internet, on your social media. You don't have to listen to me. I don't have to listen to you. I'll block you if I don't like what you're saying to me. Simple as that. But I will tell you what I feel that the Lord has given me. And you don't have to believe it's the Lord giving it to me. But these are my experiences. And uh, I came into this thing when I was 18 years old. I went the way of uh, God called me. No religion called me. No man called me. It was what God had, had pulled my heartstrings to do. And I went to church because that was what I was taught. That's what I knew from TV and what I heard people say. I went that way because that's what I was taught by man. It wasn't what God told me. I was just called by God. And that's just what I thought to do because that's what the voice of people said, not what God told me. So I went that way, just like everyone else. When you come to religion, that's why you go to religion, because that's what we're taught to do, not by what God said to do. It's not even in the Bible to go to church. And, and, and it was just quoted on, on social media about assembling yourselves together in the manner of some such is and blah, blah, blah. That's not what Jesus said. 
You can't find Jesus saying to go to church, go assemble yourselves together. He didn't say that. Matter of fact, Matthew 23, and when Jesus railed against these people, people try to twist this stuff around. And sure, a pastor will say that. Sure, it's preached over the pulpit. They want you to come in and give your money into their coffers so they can make big buildings and drive fine cars. And yeah, you, you, I hear it all the time. It's like, oh, my pastor don't do that. And, you know, he, he lives a very modest or humble life. And, you know, he drives a beat up 40 or 19 or whatever car and blah, blah, blah. So what? You don't know the man's heart, and it doesn't matter. He may be very well just a humble man trying to serve Jesus. That's fine. But it doesn't mean he's scripturally correct. Humility will not get you into heaven. Truth and love for Jesus will get you into heaven. So regardless of what you say or how humble you are, how uh, charitable you are will not bring you to heaven. It is truth and loving Jesus and loving your fellow person in Christ will get you to heaven. Obeying the commandments of Jesus Christ. All right? And following after what Jesus tells you to do. All right? So, uh, back to this. God called me. I did what I was told by what religion said. Um, Matter of fact, I did everything I was told by what religion said. Did it work? I, I had a young family. Did it work? I now have a son dead on drugs. Did it work? My first wife is dead in a fire. Did it work? Our marriage ended in infidelity. Did it work? Are all my kids saved? Did it work? A horrible catastrophe out of all of it. Did it work? There were lies. Did it work? Was it Jesus' fault? None of it was Jesus' fault. Did it work? Did man, what man told me, did it work? None of it worked. All those things that I brought people into the church and told them, did it work? I witnessed to a young man it at my work. And I told him that you come to church, man, God will change your life, man. You come into the church and things will change for you, man. You're, you're, you're miserable. This young man in college was miserable. He came into church. Man, everything just started changing for him. He started having friends. The, the, the pastor and his wife had taken their, their, their niece to raise. Beautiful young woman. Around his age. She was a piano player, raised in the church. He married her. Awesome. Couldn't have been better. They had a child. Another family in church. Wasn't long after they was married, had a kid. This, this woman's husband and his wife started having an affair. They got a divorce. Did it work? Come on, people. What kind of, what kind of crap is this? You think it all works? Tragedy after tragedy. You know why? Because religion don't work. I got several stories to tell you. In that same church, I led Sunday school. I was, I was a youth pastor. Wasn't pastor then. We were just nobody little. We didn't have no titles then. We were just, at the best, a youth leader. We were just a nobody. And that was fine with me. Sunday school, I remember times up in that little little brick building, up in the hot Sunday school room, little, little old room, 10 by 10. Had a little old pulpit up there that I taught at, little podium. 
I'd get Sunday school materials. I'd, I'd show up an hour or two hours ahead of time, studied the lesson the night before. I'd lay under that little pulpit. I would, I would snot, cry, and weep in prayer to God that, that these three or four little students, these little teenagers that would come to my class, I would weep and beg God to give me something that would feed these young kids that would change their life with the words that I would teach them that morning. And I would just snot and pray, God, please give me something that would, that would alter their lives to love you more. That would make them be a witness to you, God. See, these are things that you don't know. When I, when I teach, when I talk, when I, when I write these things, this is where I come from. When I talk about religion, this is where I've been. You don't know these things. You think I'm just somebody out here just slamming religion. Yeah, you don't know these things. I know these things. God knows these things. God showed me these things. God put me in these things. You're just out here having glee going to these services. You don't know me. You don't know the pain. You don't know the, 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 the depths that I've been. And, 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 and all to find that, that, that my pastor, who I thought the world of, would do anything for and did anything for, would allow some family come in, three families, we're all related. Some hot minister and his family and three little children. His wife's a piano player. Comes in. That young buck comes in. And one of my teenage Sunday school teens, who he turned around and had an affair with, lured her right out of my classroom and had an affair with this teenager. And then the man that eventually became pastor who would not take this man, this guy got to be preaching on the platform when it took me about seven years before this pastor would ever let me on that platform. He got right up. And even after this man was caught in adultery, with this teenager that I prayed and weep, wept for and spent time with and, 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 and took out for outings and spent our precious family time and taking these kids and, and doing all kinds of things with activities, taking them to youth rallies and everything else. And this one, one idiot comes in and lures, preys upon this teenage young girl And takes her right out of church. Right out of the graces of God. Every tear that I put on that floor. Gone in a minute. And I stood it and sat in an office. With the former pastor and this incoming pastor. And I gave him three Bible scriptures and said, you've got to remove this man from that platform of preaching. And he looked at me and he said, I will not. I'm going to let him remove himself. And thank God I was already on my way out of that church because I had taken a job in, in another state. I never had to sit under that man, thank God, because I wouldn't have. A long story cut short. This man went in to take over that church, and it really sucks that all the money I spent in the 10 years that I was there and put my blood, sweat, and tears into that church, he came in and just got all that. Just given to him. And his crooked, nasty mentality, corrupt, Eventually, turned it over to actually one of my Sunday school students as a pastor who went on for another seven years, I believe, who eventually ended up having an affair with the secretary of that church who also had children and was married 
upended the whole church, who turned right around, and they voted in his cousin, who is also was green as a greenhorn, who to this day is a pastor of that church, which I wouldn't give you a plug nickel for, and I feel is corrupt as well, is not scripturally right. You think I don't think corrupt religion is corrupt? You can have religion. And that's just a tip. I have many things to say. I have many experiences. But you don't know the half. And when I say walk away from religion, I really mean run away from religion. It is so corrupt. And these are supposed to be highly respectable men of God from highly respectable organizations. There are so many things you say, well, that's just, that's just a, a piece. That's just some. Some are just bad. And there's always going to be some. No. These are just some that got exposed. To even have a church is a mockery to God. And you think these scriptures mean that. They are twisted scriptures. And I'm going to leave this here today because I want this recorded on, and I, I will come back and I will talk more on some of these things. But walking away from religion, you should run away from religion because religion is false. But I tell you, if you're just not in a place, if it's working for you, and, and it's, it's something that brings peace to your life, I'm not condemning you. But I can tell you that it will not save you. The only thing that will save you is Jesus Christ and your love for Him. Don't let it move you away from Jesus Christ. Love Jesus. Keep Him, number one. And don't let any of these corrupt people move you from who Jesus is. These altars are tainted and tarnished. Jesus died once and for all. These things are fake. We do not have an altar today. Jesus abolished these ordinances. They are not for us to go to. We do not bow before men. We do not bow before these ordinances. These are done away with. We have a new and living way. We pray to God through the heart and our mind. We are written on the tables of our heart, and in our mind, we serve God. We do not go to buildings. We do not have altars. We have nothing to sacrifice. Nothing. Jesus was our sacrifice once and for all. If you lay a sacrifice, you think you have a sacrifice, you are telling God that Jesus was not good enough. And if you think by doing that, you are offering God anything, then you have already spit upon Jesus' sacrifice. And these people that tell you that are only asking you to please them and prove to them that you are worthy to please them and not God. God does not require that today, and they are lying to you. Go in peace today and ponder and seek after God's moving and not man.